still standing, let's go to the book of John. John chapter 4, while we're standing, if we can stand and reverence God's word, if you need a Bible, they have some in the back. If you're a visitor today and you got a visitor's card and you didn't have a pen to fill it out, raise your hand so we can get you a pen if you're still here. Some say they didn't get a pen. Ushers, please. If you need a Bible, raise your hand. Now, the members of Wissick don't need a Bible, do they? And, amen. I don't want to have to pull out my anointed belt that God has given me specifically for the saints. That's not the message you want to hear. <laughs> John chapter 4. Beginning the fourth verse. Latter part of that. Finishing up with our Thanksgiving series. Have y'all enjoyed the Thanksgiving series? Yeah. Amen. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. I go online too and I listen to the to the sermons. Sermon.net slash Wissick. You want to hear everything? Sermon.net slash Wissick. You can hear anything you want to hear. John chapter 4, so we're going to break this up. This is the story of the woman at the well, and we're not going to read everything in every detail and go into the whole conversation. So we're going to read John 4, 4 through 15, skip to 28 through 30, and then we're, is that right? John 4? Mm-hmm. Okay. 4 through 15, then we're going to read 28 through 30, and then we're going to go to 39 through 42, all right? Amen. But he needed to go through Samaria. Keep that in your mind. But he needed to go through Samaria. That's the latter part of four. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink. See, y'all excited already. You would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. I like that. The woman said to him, sir, <laughs> give me this water <laughs> that I might not thirst nor come here to draw. Somebody want the water in here. Jump down to 28. The woman then left her water pot. She said she wanted the water right. Then the woman left her water pot, went her way into the city and said to the men, and she had a problem with men, come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. Jump down to 39. And it says, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. Then they said to the woman, Now we believe, not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed Christ, the Savior of the world. That is a powerful text. I think it just preached itself. I'm going to go sit down. Amen. Part four of the series, giving God thanks through evangelizing. Because that's what happened in the text. You can take your seats. Giving God thanks 
through evangelizing. One of the main reasons that I like the Gospel of John is because when I read it, it helps me to understand that Jesus is God. That, that's very foundational for believers. It helps me understand that Jesus is God. In chapter 1, he jumps to, to this truth by stating, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. But then he goes on and jumps down to 14 and says, and this is of uh, chapter 1, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. Now this is important that we understand this truth because how we believe determines how it affects our life. How we believe this truth determines how it affects our life. If one believes that Jesus is nothing more than a man, is nothing more than a good prophet that did great things while here on earth, then not only is Jesus still in the earth, and not only do his remains still are still here where we can dig it up, and all of his work stopped, but the same remains for the individual that only saw him is just that. These people, they believe that their end is here. That you can live life only to the best of your abilities to do a few good things and then it stops with no hope for the life to come. But for the person that believes that God is in Christ reconciling mankind unto himself and that he's not just a man but he's the God man, the expressed image of the invisible God. That he is wonderful, that he is counselor, that he is a mighty God, that he is everlasting father, that he is the prince of peace. To that person, that truth becomes a seed in them. And by faith they understand that where Christ is, we are also because we have been seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And he is at the right hand of the Father. So his work doesn't stop because greater works are done through each and every one of us that are here. And we don't have to live just trying to do our best. But we live and we move and we have our being by the power of the Holy Spirit who influences us to live like pilgrims just passing through because we recognize that heaven is our home and not here. So it is through the revelation of God that we see where we should go and forfeit where we have been because what used to be unclear about God has been made clear through Jesus because Jesus is the revelation of God. And the reason why it is clear in Jesus because the Bible tells us that he is the truth. Everybody's searching for some truth but I stand here to tell you that Jesus is the truth. And anytime we get hold of truth, we see truth as the way. Well, the Bible also tells us that Jesus is the way. Well, if now you see Jesus as the way and the truth, then you also realize that he is the life. And it is the excitement of this revelation that causes you to go and testify and go tell others about the God, the Jesus that has been revealed to you. In fact, your greatest response to the word is your testimony. Your greatest response to Jesus ought to be your testimony in word and deed about what God has done for you and how good he's been in your life. The fact that you didn't know him before and now you know him. You ought to holler in the midst of the chaos in your home and say, come see a man named Jesus. You ought to holler at the foolishness on your job and say, come see a man named Jesus. You ought to holler at the foolishness in your community and say, come see a man named Jesus because he's been revealed to to me and I know him and I want to make sure that you know come see a man named Jesus you got to let him know you got to let him know that I thought he was just a man too but the more I spoke to him the more that we had a conversation and the more I didn't just talk but that he spoke back to me I realized that he is the Christ and I don't want what I used to have, but I want to look forward to whatever God has for me. Come see a man named Jesus. It's the revelation that causes this. It's through revelation in this text that the woman goes from having a conversation with Jesus to having a conversation with her city about Jesus. I like that. I like that. 
And without dissecting every detail and principle that's in this whole story, can I give you just three reasons why we ought to give God thanks through evangelizing? Just this three reasons and we can get out of here. First of all, you should give God thanks by evangelizing because he waited for you. Oh, this is a good one. You ought to give God thanks because he waited for you. Jesus is sitting at Jacob's well at about noon waiting for this woman from Samaria. I imagine that Jesus would have waited all day till this woman came because she would be the forerunner or she would be the one to prepare the way for him to come into Samaria and be identified, the text tells us, as the savior of the world. It's amazing that God is so intentional about redeeming us that he sets himself up in the midst of our normal, everyday affairs so that he can reveal himself to us. This is precious. It makes me ask the question, how many times did I miss God along the way before I really saw him? See, she was doing her normal thing. She was going to go draw water, and Jesus was right there. I praise God for salvation and where I am right now, but all of that time I wasted along the way. How many times did I miss Jesus sitting right there waiting on me to give him a yes? It didn't matter how bad it was. Jesus was in a place. And he set himself up and he waited for you. Think how many times that I missed him. How did I miss the clues along the way? Jesus was so patient with me that he waited and I passed him by. But I believe that God just doesn't want to be a stop in your daily plans. Watch this. But he wants you to stop your plans and he be the orchestrator of your plans and the goal of every day that you live. So he waits for us because he realizes that you haven't started living until you have made him the center of your life. I like that about God. Because once Jesus begins to dialogue with this woman again, he is still in waiting mode. You know why? Because he is not satisfied till the woman leaves understanding who he is. It wasn't enough just for him to show up but again, my God is patient. He has to sit there and, and dialogue with her and talk with her. Even though he was hungry and he was tired and he was thirsty. I got a message to get out and I need to make sure that she understands. Because she's going to start a revival in her city. So woman, we're going to sit here and talk. I ain't got nothing to draw with, but I'm going to sit here and be a patient Jesus and wait on you. Because I got something to tell you. I got something to put in your spirit that's going to change your life around. He's not satisfied till the woman leaves with understanding. It is important that she understand who he is because with understanding produces a decision to give up what she once knew to what she knows now. See, see, that's the problem with what's going on in some of these churches. People don't understand what's coming from the pulpit because foolishness is getting preached. When you don't understand, you don't make a decision. So you leave church the same way you came in. You came in nasty, you leave nasty. You came in cussing, you leave cussing. You came in a fornicator, you leave fornicator because you don't understand. But Jesus was patient. He said, I got to sit here and, and wait till she gets this. Because I got to use her for something. I'm a rabbi and she's a woman. I shouldn't even be talking to her. She's a Samaritan and I'm a Jew. We shouldn't even be in conversation. But I got to wait patiently. Because I got something that I want to do with her. Stop trying to make me preach. Come on. I don't know where my rag is. I think I left it in the back. Sometimes we want to beat people up. Because they don't get saved now. Because they don't make a decision now. No, I said Jesus was patient. Put off those habits now. But the Bible says in Romans 10, 17 very clearly that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more the woman talked to the word, the living word, Jesus, I believe faith quickened in her. So much so that she came to the well, watch this, carrying a bucket, but left carrying the burden of God's word to the people of her town. Y'all didn't hear that. <laughs> she came to the well with her bucket, but she left with a burden. <laughs> Whoa! My Lord. 
my Lord. All of this took place because of a patient Jesus waiting on this woman. She didn't come to the well to be used, nor did she know she would have an encounter with Jesus. But he had it all set up, and all she did was receive him. I confess that I wasn't looking to be used. I wasn't looking for an encounter, but I thank God that he knew that I needed an encounter more than I did. You know, we walk around, I don't need no bottle, I don't need nothing. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I'm glad he knew it better than me. Aren't you glad you didn't give up or get tired when you didn't come his direction? That he didn't get tired when you didn't come his direction, but said to himself, and that was at the beginning of the text, I have to go through. See, he didn't get mad at you. He said, I have to go through. He said, I have to cross your path. I have to go through your mind and become a thought to you. I have to touch your heart and be a desire to you. I have to illuminate your spirit and become faith in you. I have to go through. I like that. He could have stayed where he was in heaven, but he said, I got to go through. You're going to feel me in your mind. You're going to feel me in your spirit. You're going to feel me in your heart, even if you don't want to, because I'm patient. That, that's why that car accident you got into, that's why you didn't die, because he was waiting on you. If you ever been in a crazy accident, two could have killed me. But he was patient on me. Even in the midst of that, Wissick was in his mind. And he says, I can't let you go. I need to give you time to get this together. So I'm going to allow you to lose some folks along the way so that I can be your desire. You may not have mother. You may not have father. You may not have grandmother. But you got me. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Good Lord, I'm about to jump through this ceiling. Mm. Mm. Jesus said, I have to go through because you may not see it now, but once you give me some time with you, the revelation of who I am is going to send you back with a word in your mouth that will change your life and everyone around you. That's what happened in the text. And it will be thanksgiving unto me. That's what the Lord is saying. It'll be thanksgiving unto me for you to declare the goodness of the Lord. We're talking about giving thanks to God through evangelism. The way he saved, saved me, I can't even close my mouth. I got to tell everybody I know about the goodness of the Lord in my life. I wasn't even worth it, but he made me something. See, he turned this nothing into something. See, you think you somebody before you get in Christ, but he turns your life around and he makes you who you are. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Not by my merit, not because I put on nice clothes, not because I wear cologne, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And all that happened because a patient Jesus said, I have to go through I got to hang out a little while to make sure that he understands. Because if he don't understand, he can't make a decision. The moment I understood it, I told everybody I knew. Take your seat. Take your seat. Can we go to point two? Y'all all right? Point two. You should give thanksgiving to God by evangelizing. Watch this. Because he doesn't stop at showing you as the problem. But he shows or reveals himself as a solution. This is good. He doesn't stop at showing you as the problem. But he shows or reveals himself as a solution. Jesus has a conversation with the Samaritan woman. And does not have her just reflect on her issue. Or see her situation for what it really is. But he lets her know that he is the answer. He declares to her in verse 26 of this text that he is the Messiah. He is the Christ right here, right now, being revealed right in front of your very eyes. If you look at the conversation, and you all read this on your own time, the woman knew of worship, and she knew of Christ, but now she understands worship, and she understands Christ. <laughs> the Lord be tickling me. 
through the revelation of the word that was made flesh, also known as Jesus, that she was talking to. It is the revelation of God by his word that brings understanding. And when it is understood, now we have something to talk about. I normally don't talk about stuff I don't understand. But when God brings us understanding as to who he is, then now you have something to talk about. The living word had the same encounter with her that the written word, which is still alive, has with us. Every time we approach it. Every time we engage it, it examines us, the Bible says, and searches the deep things and judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart so that nothing is hidden from God's sight. That's according to Hebrews 4 and 13. Now, this is refreshing because you can't be delivered if you don't really know the extent of your issue. So he had to have that conversation with her. You can't be delivered if you don't really know how bad it is. That, that's why I like having some spirit-filled believers that'll come alongside me sometime and just tell me that my stuff really stinks. Because I can't get delivered if I don't know just how bad <laughs> it really is. But the beautiful thing about God's word is that it not only diagnoses you, but it delivers you. And that's what Jesus did for this woman. It's what I call balanced ministry. I'm not just going to tell you how bad you are, but I'm also tell you how bad I am and that I got the power to take care of anything that you have. Balance ministry. I don't know about you, but I'm always irritated by a person that has no problem showing me what I have done wrong, but doesn't take the time to show me what it takes to get it right. Anybody ain't too cool with them type of people? You, you, you wish you, vengeance can be yours, saith the Lord. <laughs> little one-two punch real quick but it's worse when it's someone that you either know or perceive has the answer and they never give you the information so you leave their presence the same way you came only knowing how to do things the way you always did Jesus ain't like that but see Jesus is a high priest that doesn't mind being touched with our infirmities. He doesn't mind being touched with our weaknesses and our challenges and our wrongs because he not only understands what you're going through, but he feels it to the point of action. That's why he props up and waits for you. Not only do I feel it, I get it. It's a disgrace. But guess what? I'm going to prop up and, and, and spend some time waiting for you. Because the reason why you're walking around and keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, which is the definition of insanity, because I haven't revealed myself to you. So that's why I got to prop up somewhere. So the next time you go do it again, you will realize I'm there and I'm going to wait around till you get understanding so that when you leave, you won't never have to come back. I'm preaching up in here. I had to do something because I can't jump through the roof. So I don't know what that was. It wasn't a gang sign. Just act like you didn't see it this Sunday. Amen, visitors. It ain't normally like that. What that was. I, what? Mm. So we don't come to Christ because we have the answer. But we come because he is the answer. We are aware of what's wrong and even know what's right. But the problem is getting to what's right in the wrong world. Good God. Did I write this? The problem is getting to the light when we see all of this darkness. But Jesus makes it possible by revealing himself to us. And when we accept him, he transfers us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And then according to Philippians 2.13, it is God that works in us to will and to act according to his good purpose. God does it. Somebody needs to say, thank you, Lord, for the help. Thank you, Lord, for looking beyond my faults and seeing my needs. And I'm not talking about I needed a car or I needed a house or I needed clothes. If you really examine me, all I needed was you. <laughs> See, when I said needs, I'm not talking about that stuff. Thank you for looking beyond my faults and seeing my need for you. Oh, my God. When a God does something like that, you ought to open up 
your mouth and declare the goodness of the Lord because that's thanksgiving unto the Lord. That's evangelism 101. God's been good to me. Let me tell you how he can be good to you. He saved me. Let me tell you how he can save you. He healed me. Let me tell you how he can heal me. He restored my marriage. He can restore your marriage too. That's thanksgiving unto the Lord. It's a way of giving thanks to God for what he has done in your life. Y'all ready for point three? Now somebody going to do a backflip here. Point three, John. You show thanksgiving to God through evangelism every time you declare Jesus wherever you go. That's so simple. <laughs> and I say wherever you go. Well, I'm at work. Well, I'm standing outside with my homeboy. They, they, aren't they the people that need it? They the same people you come to the altar talking about you wish they get it right? Well, if God got you right, why can't you tell them how God got you right and he can make the difference in their life too? He ain't got to bring it to the altar. Keep it. <laughs> you show thanksgiving to God through evangelism every time you declare Jesus wherever you go. It was God's good pleasure to make himself known to you through Jesus. You respond in thanksgiving by making him known to others by your testimony. God has placed this treasure, you know the text, in earthen vessels and it is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is a treasure that is meant to be released and opened up to the world so that people come to the knowledge of Jesus. You don't have to be perfect to proclaim the gospel. That's why he placed it in earthen vessels or cracked pots. Anybody here a cracked pot? I, I don't know. I'm all cracked up. So you, you, might be, you might be cute. I'm sorry. I'm a cracked pot. He placed this tre treasure in earthen vessels and cracked pots like us so that we would remember and others would understand that the excellency of the power is of God and not us. When the woman went back to Samaria, there was nothing excellent about her past. There was nothing excellent about her present. Her name was probably dragged through the mud and she was dealing with some stuff. But that's the type of vessel that God needs because when she went to proclaim, she went back to her city to proclaim the message about Jesus. People responded not to who she was, but what came out of her mouth. <laughs> she was a mess when she left, but she was a minister when she came back oh Lord. oh my god they responded to the word that came out of her mouth now this is good news for you because you need to know that even on your worst day even though you may be a little rough around the edges still struggling with some sin and still trying to hold it all together. Watch this. God can use that breakdown in your life to get a breakthrough of the gospel out of your mouth so that others will declare if God can do it for you, he can do the same for me. I, I know you're worried about all the cracks that you got in your life but know that the gospel shines through each and every crack in your life and you may not be holding it together but God through his power holds it together and he lets you stand before your enemies have a living testimony of the power of God in your life. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. See, I can't sit on what I know about God. Because if it wasn't for him waiting on me, while I fooled around in my mess and then showing me that he is the answer to all I had been searching for, I might already be too far gone. I might already be another statistic. I might be numb to the power of God. But because he didn't just sit in heaven and watch me go to hell, I got to get up and walk in the grace of God, walk in the strength of God, and tell everybody I know, come see a man. Because it was amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I'm found with blind. But now I see the Jesus that you're looking for. He's not dead. He's alive because he lives inside of me. Come see a man named Jesus. 
Y'all better worship the Lord in this place. Every time you open your mouth and declare Jesus, you are giving thanks to God because you are returning back to him a harvest. He is, he is getting interest off of your evangelistic ministry. The Bible said that many of the Samaritans believed in him because of her testimony. Her words brought them to the word and they left knowing that Jesus is the savior of the world. God is looking for somebody that's saying, I may not know all of Genesis to Revelations, but I know where I was and I know where I am. And it's because of Jesus that I have something to talk about. Come see a man named Jesus. So don't try to hold me back. Don't try to keep me quiet because the well that I used to draw from, I don't have to anymore because I'm satisfied in Jesus. The woman left her bucket that she went to draw water with and ran back home with living water in her spirit. Yeah. She didn't get nothing out of that well, but she received something from Jesus. She didn't have to go back to her situation, but instead she was thrusted into her new occupation of starting an evangelistic revival in her town. So somebody in here needs to leave whatever they've been carrying and not go back. Say, I don't have to go back to that man. I don't have to go back to that woman. I don't have to go back to homosexuality. I don't have to go back to drugs. I don't have to go back to alcohol. I don't have to go back to fornication. I don't have to go back to adultery. I don't have to go back to stealing. I don't have to go back to gossiping. I don't have to go back into envy. I don't have to go back into depression. I don't have to go back into anger. I don't have to go back hating on folks because I'm filled with some new stuff and it's called the Holy Spirit and I'm forgetting those things that are behind me and I'm pressing forward. Come see a man named Jesus. a story to tell I got a story to tell come see a man I'm not going back to it no more now I get it I understand I ain't walking around here insane now I get it thank God he waited on me thank you Jesus were ever sitting on the bench saying Lord I'm waiting to get in the game but like the good coach that he is he looked at you and drafted you into the kingdom of God put your hands together and give God some praise in this place He's worthy. You take your seats. He's worthy. dare leave this world never having shared your faith with others but the Bible declares that we are ambassadors for Christ and it also says that he has given us the ministry of reconciliation which means the same way that God, by his spirit, drew you and reconciled him, you unto himself. He has made you an agent, an ambassador. So you act on the behalf of God, walking in the power of God. 
So now this is thanksgiving unto the Lord because of the way he reconciled you. It is expected that we go out and reconcile others to him. We don't bring people to people. See, sometimes we mess up in these relationships. I just want to try to reconcile us. No, we need to reconcile people back to God. You reconcile them back to God. Now y'all can have the same conversation. I know a man <laughs> named Jesus. You got something to talk about. I don't know everybody's story in here. I don't know how you grew up. I don't know what you saw along the way. But one thing that I do know, even if you missed him, Jesus was posted up somewhere waiting for you to make a decision. It may have took you 10 years to make that decision. It may have took you 15 years. But God is so patient and his mercies are new every morning. He preserved you so that no matter how long it took, you would one day be able to say, I receive Jesus Christ. There's some people that die and don't get to say that. But you did. And you have, the Bible says you have died with him and you have also risen with him. So now in this new life that you have in him, you need to be walking everywhere you go telling somebody about how good God is. Remember when Mary Magdalene, she went to the tomb and she went to look for Jesus? He wasn't there. He wasn't there. If I remember the story correct, Mary is the one that went back after she received the revelation. See, see, you don't get that and don't talk about it. You don't get that and don't talk about it. That is thanksgiving unto the Lord because it's almost as if it's an offering. Remember, say, you, you have something to give because you have it. You have the word, which means you have to give it, and it sends a harvest back to the Lord. What did the end of the story say? They didn't just believe now because she said, come see a man. They knew that he was the Christ, the Savior of the world. I'm not even going to ask you to stand. Go ahead and bow your heads. Father, it's so awesome to know you and to know that you care about us so much that you'd be willing to wait on us. The Bible says that what is man that thou art mindful of him? 